Hello everybody and welcome to That's Football for your latest transfer news in this transfer window which to be honest with you could just twist and turn anyway at any time we just don't know Ronaldo where are you going but also Chelsea fans Liverpool fans Arsenal fans big developments for you Spurs as well and we've still got two months of this transfer window to go. Lots of clubs obviously preparing to go on tours, but wanting to get players in as well. Um, where to start? Well, I'm going to start off with, um, I suppose, a multitude of uh, players linked with the one club, and that is Chelsea and also Arsenal as well. Rafina still not made his mind up. For Arsenal fans, I was told that Rafina Arsenal was very close a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, very close isn't done deal. I've also been told in the last 24 hours that Arsenal have enhanced, um, is enhanced the word? Uh, what's the word they use in transfers? Uh, not deal done, but we're not getting a lot of those. Um, increased their interest in Yuri Tillemans, uh, Arsenal. A uh, player that's been linked to them a lot. It's from the same source who told me about Rafina a few weeks ago. So Arsenal, Tillemans, Leicester are a pain. Look, I don't want this deal to happen. As a Manchester United fan, I'd love to see Tillemans at Manchester United. I think in a midfield two next to a De Jong, I think Tillemans would be perfect for Manchester United. I'm not saying he's one of the world's best midfielders, but for where Manchester United are and what, what we've been using, I think Tillemans would be a massive step forward. Um, but the same could be said for Arsenal, who I think do need to add something to their midfield as well. It's something that Arteta was looking at. What I'm told is that Arsenal are really interested in this player and that they are advancing, enhancing, or whatever the word is, their interest. But Leicester are difficult to deal with. So keep your eye on Tillemans. As I've said, we've had some good info this summer around people like De Ligt, Sterling especially, Rafinha, although ultimately ended up being wrong. The interest was there from Arsenal and the confidence was there. So keep an eye on that Arsenal fans. Tillemans to Arsenal. Apparently he'd be very happy to go to a team like Arsenal. I think he was expecting a few more options outside of the Premier League, but they haven't transpired. He's very much in the same situation as Ruben Neves, where these options, I think people like Neves and Tillemans thought that there would be a lot more going on. And I think they will be picked up, but maybe the clubs are not going to get the price they want and the options are not there for the players. So keep an eye on Arsenal. They are having a good transfer winner. They've just been a bit unlucky with Rafinha and maybe the Lissandro Martinez deal will fall through for them as well as he chooses United. So keep an eye on Tillemans. That's one I would say keep an eye on, especially with Arsenal. Um, with Rafinha, and, and look, forget that. I don't think he's going to Arsenal anymore. It'll be Chelsea or Barcelona. Barcelona still holding up this transfer window, whether it's Lewandowski, Bernardo Silva, Koundé, um, Frankie de Jong. It's just, they're just holding up so much, Rafinha. And, 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 and it's difficult. I mean, I've been very close to this as a United fan because we're waiting to get de Jong. It's difficult to understand what's going on at Barcelona. I don't think many Barcelona fans understand, but they are the big holdup in this transfer window in the sense that, they won't sell De Jong, they can't get Lewandowski, they can't get Kunde. they want to do these deals, they want Bernardo Silva, they want Rafinha as well. They seem to want to be the big spenders of the summer, but, they've the, but they're the club with financial issues. So whenever this release, this Barcelona dam gets released, I expect loads of things to happen. But Chelsea have got the best offer on the table for Leeds for Rafinha. He obviously clearly likes the Barcelona move. Um, Dembele still hasn't committed to Barcelona. He was in talks with Chelsea. So there's all sorts there. But the interesting one for me is De Ligt. De Ligt, again, I, mean, I don't get this. I put a, I know what I'm doing sometimes when I put a tweet out. And with this, I knew what would happen. And I basically said, it came out about De Ligt wanting to go to Bayern. But again, Chelsea have got the better financial offer. So Chelsea put the better financial offer on the table for Juventus and for De Ligt, But apparently he prefers to go to Bayern Munich. The same with Rafinha. It's better offer on the table for Rafinha and, and Leeds. But he wants to go to Barcelona. I'm confused by this. Maybe it's the legacy of Bayern Munich and Barcelona that makes them a bigger club in some players' eyes than Chelsea. But for me... Not even as a English Premier League fan, um, I just think the Premier League's the place to be. Um, and maybe Rafinha wants to go to Barcelona because he's played in the Premier League. But from De Ligt's point of view, I mean, I said it as a joke yesterday, and a lot of people didn't like it. But I said, can't Chelsea just uh, buy De Ligt and buy him five pre uh, Bundesliga winners' medals and save him five years going to buy Munich? Because what are you going to buy Munich for? It's a massive club, but what are you going there for? I mean, the domestic league is a walk in the park, like. It, it, they're going to win the, the the Bundesliga for the next five years. I'll be stunned if they don't. They may win a Champions League. I don't think they'll min, win more than one in the next five years. But I think in the Premier League, you're going to be playing in the most competitive league in the world. You may win a Champions League. And I think, I, don't, I just don't understand it. 
I'm no disrespect to Bayern Munich. I think they're a fantastic league club. They run really, really well. But their league is not competitive. And I, I don't understand why players want to do it. But it's his choice. That That's my opinion. People probably disagree with it. That's absolutely fine. But it is my opinion. So sorry for that. Um, but it's an interesting one for Chelsea because I think De Ligt would be brilliant in the Premier League. And I think he'd be brilliant for Chelsea. But... For some reason, he, 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 they may not get that deal done, and it must be frustrating for Chelsea because I think every way they turn at the moment, they're, they're making, they've got the money, they've got the ambition, they've got the aggression like they always have, but they seem to be hitting a brick wall with players. Like Kunde was a player that they wanted, wants to go to Barcelona. De Ligt seems to want to go to Bayern Munich. Rafinha is another one, so they are they are hitting that uh, a little bit. But with Raheem Sterling, that one will happen I mean I've known about that for a long time even before people were talking about it it will happen um, but Chelsea's still going to be very active and I said this a few weeks ago that the eye for me is on Chelsea and what they're going to do because I think unlike United they've got the money and they've got the ambition to go out and get really good players um, which is a, is a good comparison actually Man United to Chelsea I mean Chelsea have already won things in me recent years they want to get into the race with Liverpool and Man City and they'll show you how they want to do that. They may not do it, but they'll show you how they want to do that. Manchester United, brand Chester United, they talk about closing that gap and then look at what they're doing in the market. It's just not comparable, is it, really? Um, so, yeah, Delitz, Delitz, Delitz an interesting one. And keep an eye out for Tillemans, Arsenal, uh, Rafinha. We'll see what happens. Quickly on to Liverpool, Bellingham. Um, forget about it. Forget about it. There is this Liverpool... Clearly wants a midfielder. I think they, I think Liverpool are run differently to Man City and Manchester United and Chelsea. That the, the funds are there, but they don't spend in the same way. Responsible, and it's been a very good model for them. I think it's obvious to Liverpool fans, and and I would say to outsiders that I would say if I was going to improve that Liverpool team now, I would be looking at a midfielder. And yes, Barella, Bellingham would massively, massively be exciting signings for Liverpool. But Bellingham's not going to happen this summer. Um, never say never, but it's not going to happen, in my opinion, because he would cost a massive amount of money and he'll cost a massive amount of money next year. But also, Dortmund don't do this. They don't sell two big players in one summer very often. And Haaland's the player they've lost. They won't sell Bellingham as well. Bellingham will be the player they sell next year. And if, if Dortmund have got a really good player next year, they'll have to wait till the year after. They, they're also... We, we learned this with Sancho. They're, they're a very difficult club to um, manipulate. They're, they know what they're doing in the transfer market and I do not see Bellingham going anywhere. And also, I don't think Bellingham's pushing to go either. He's got a World Cup coming up in January. The only thing that might push Bellingham is the fact that for some reason we've got a plonker as an England manager who doesn't actually value people who don't play in the Premier League, even if they're playing in a league that's very competitive and, and, and Champions League football. But... Uh, that won't happen this summer. Liverpool fans should not get their hopes up about that. And I think next summer, I wouldn't necessarily get your hopes up about that either. They might win that race, but I expect there'll be a lot of clubs in that race for Jude Bellingham next summer. Back to London, back to North London, back to Spurs. Longley from Barcelona expected to join on loan. Um, when that will happen, we don't know. But Pau Torres is apparently still a player that Spurs are looking at, which is quite interesting because if they get Longley, they've already got Romero. Um, is he looking to play a, a three at the back or is he looking to have, just have loads and loads of options um, I think the Conte Tottenham experience has been quite interesting so far um, it slowed down a little bit uh, obviously Richarlison's gone in um, Basuma's gone into the midfield Perisic is a bit of a bit of squad depth and I think if they bring a couple of defenders in they've got a lot of depth they have got a lot of depth and um I just can't believe how quiet it's gone on Pau Torres. Manchester United seem to have swerved it, even though I thought he was the second option to Timber. We now are locked in on Lissandra Martinez. We won't be buying two centre-backs, so that'll be United out of that race. And Pau Torres, Villarreal are very much looking for buyers. So I can see Pau Torres moving, and I think Spurs may well... I think what Spurs might be doing with Pau Torres is waiting. Um, they know Villarreal wants to do a deal. They know Pau Torres is willing to go. Uh, I think the prices are £45 million pounds at the moment. Maybe it's just wait until a little bit later in the summer because last summer was the summer of the centre-back. You had Upamecano going to Bayern Munich, Canate going to Liverpool, Manchester United got Varane. There was a couple of others as well. Obviously, Alaba went to um, Real Madrid. It was the summer of the centre-back. It's not really the summer of the centre-back this year. And Pau Torres has almost missed the boat. 
So there's not many clubs that are going to be looking to buy Pau Torres. Real Madrid, Barcelona, I don't think so. I don't think he's really going to go to Serie A or PSG. So that leaves the Premier League. So the Premier League centre-back market... Um, Maybe Man City would look at him, to be fair. Maybe Man City would look at him. Certainly don't think Liverpool will. Uh, Chelsea could look at him. They do need a centre-back. I'm surprised he's not been linked there. And Spurs as well. So keep an eye on Pau Torres. Maybe Man City, Chelsea, Spurs. But I do think he'll move. And I think it's just one of one of those deals for later in the, in, in the summer transfer window, uh, potentially. And that leaves us with Cristiano Ronaldo. What's going on with Ronaldo? We can check all this out on the United stand. We seem to be talking about him every show at the moment. Um, Barcelona was a bit of a red herring last night. Chelsea, very much interested, but it depends whether Thomas Tuchel wants to do it. I'm convinced that Ronaldo is either doing this to scare the club into action or he's doing this because he knows he's got to move. Ronaldo and George Mendes wouldn't let it be known that he wants to leave without knowing somewhere to go because that could just backfire massively. So I think that there's one of two things happening there. Of course, I want Ronaldo to stay at United. I'm a massive Ronaldo fan and I think he's up, you know, Man United without Ronaldo is, you know, it's like a wheelbarrow without a wheel. We, we need Ronaldo. But if he's going to go, buy Munich uh, for me. I, don't, I know they're saying they don't want him, but when Lewandowski goes, is are they just playing? I mean, they could be just going... We don't want Ronaldo. We don't want Ronaldo because they don't want to make Barcelona know that they're going for Ronaldo to make it easier to get Lewandowski. Maybe when Lewandowski goes to Barcelona, they will move for Ronaldo. And, and that, to me, would be that that's the ideal move. I don't want Ronaldo to go, but that's the ideal move because he's never played in the Bundesliga. It's Bayern Munich. He'll win the Bundesliga there. He'll score a lot of goals and he'll be competing in the Champions League. And I can understand why Ronaldo wants to do it. I don't want it to happen, but I can understand. I said this all last season. If we don't get the Champions League, he'll go. And lo and behold, it's actually coming to pass. I'm hoping that he stays at United. But Chelsea can offer him something that he probably wants. I just don't see him playing in the Premier League other than for Manchester United. I just don't think that that can happen but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Bayern Munich are just playing it quiet um, but we'll have to wait and see my hope is it's all a big ploy to get United to sign some players but we'll see anyway look thanks everyone for watching a whirlwind of an update there this transfer window is offering so many things it's very difficult to be certain on anything at the moment you think one thing and then they're ending up somewhere else but yes keep an eye on Tillemans I don't think Leicester will keep him to let his contract run down but they're a difficult club to deal with. We saw that with Maguire. We've seen it before. They always get good prices. 50 million for Chilwell they got as well. So Tillemans has got one year left on his deal. They might just say, look, we're keeping you and you can run your contract down. But I think from Leicester's point of view, they are willing to sell. I think they want 40 million. That might be a lot for a year left on your deal. I mean, Tillemans with four years on his contract is probably a 60 million pound player. So I really think Tillemans, you should be looking at 30 million. But apparently Leicester want more than that. So we'll see. But Arsenal, probably the favourites to get him, unfortunately. I'd like to see him at United. Get your comments in. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll speak to you on the next one. Make sure you subscribe. Have a good day.